Today, the project is gonna be these little washers right here. We're gonna need 16 of them, and they have a recess that captures the end of that spring so that the spring stays in alignment with the stud. Here's our washer depicted, showing it's a 1 8 inch thick with a 9 64 inch hole through the center for the stud. And then you've got, uh, you're using 7 16 stock and you got a 5 16 counter bore in it to grab the end of that spring. It's 5 16 inch in diameter. We're gonna need six up, 16 of them, so let's get started. Let me go ahead and apologize about the audio. It's uh, a cheap microphone. I'll get a better one. Okay, we're gonna make our washers and we're starting off by just polishing our material. It's 12L14, and you'll notice I've got a board below the chuck. That's to protect my waves from the grit, from the sandpaper. And please do that uh, if you use sandpaper on your lathe. We're gonna have to clean up the end. We're gonna do that by passing a tool across the end of the rod here and that'll face it off using Eccentric Engineering's diamond tool holder. Go ahead and put my parting blade in the tool holder. That's what I'll use next um, in the tool holder. So I'm just getting it pre-positioned. Now I've got to spot the end here for my future drilling operation. I've got a spotting bit, which is not a cheap tool, but it's really nice to have rather than using a, a center bit. Once I've got that taken care of, I'll change that out put my 9 64th drill bit in. Now I start out trying to drill deep enough to be able to part off half a dozen of these washers. And I found that my drill bit was wandering off center as it got deep into the material. So reverted to just drilling deep enough to get one washer. And that kept me on center. All right, so now we're going to get that drill bit out of there and put a uh, mill tool in. This is a wonderful technique to use on a lathe. You don't really think about it when you need a lathe so that you could put a, a milling tool in and use it with your lathe, but you'll see how pretty this cut is. I'm trying to go 1 16th deep and I'm just eyeballing it. It's not that critical. Just captures the spring and spring isn't a real precision instrument. So as long as it looks good to you aesthetically, captures that spring, it's gonna work. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to part off. And the best method I've found for measuring your, your uh, depth on your parting off is to take a filler gauge and, and get that blade aligned with the end of your workpiece. This goes fast and it's simple. It's a lot better than trying to do math. And I've got a carriage stop that I've made in the shop and has been a wonderful addition to the lathe. Positioning that because it has a dial indicator mounted in it. You can see the plunger and once I get in that position, I just have to move over 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. It's the thickness of our washer. Lock my carriage down. That's important. And we'll get ready to part it off. I'm dialing it back to 139 RPMs, lubricating it good, and we'll just ease in there. Now this operation seems to be causing a lot of consternation online. People worry about their parting off abilities. And I found that it has to do with locking the carriage down, feeding at the proper rate, and having the lathe running at the right RPM. 
I see guys running really high RPMs during this operation, and that's creating a lot of friction, which creates a lot of heat. So I suggest that if you're having trouble parting off, dial your RPMs back a little bit and uh, experiment with the different speeds and feeds. And it's different for different materials, but you'll get a feel for it. And you'll be able to kind of guess at what you need. So we've got our piece parted off. You can see how pretty it is. You could have put some chamfers on there. Uh, I like the look of it squared off, this particular piece. You got a little bit of a tab back here that is a remainder uh, from the, the parting off operation. That's always going to be there. And what we'll do, we'll, you can clean this up with a file. Uh, to speed things up, I ran over and hit it on the belt sander and then put it in my vise with the copper jaws and hit it with the file to make it nice and flat and pretty. Pointing out the chamfer areas again if you wanted to do that. But I think I like what we got here. That's, that's one of 16. What did it take? I think four minutes. Okay, so once again, we ran that in real time so you can see how much time I'm actually spending on each washer. I think that's very informative for you guys and you kind of get an idea of, of my production pace and, and how to align your order of operations so that you can knock this out. So that's, uh, that's how we're making the washers and uh, I'm gonna cut the video off, make 15 more and I appreciate y'all showing up today. Hope you're enjoying this content. Hope you're learning something. I'm sure I'm learning something by, by explaining what I'm doing. And please click the subscribe button. We're right at 500 subscribers, trying to get to 1,000 so that uh, YouTube has to pay me uh, for my content. That would be a, that's a challenge for me to get there. And uh, you'll tell your friends, and click, click the subscribe button. And I apologize about the rain. Thanks again for being with us.